Barack Obama has told America that it is a stronger country after the 9-11 attacks. On the eve of the 10th anniversary, the president pledged that the authorities would remain vigilant and resilient against the threat of any further attacks. Two days of commemoration ceremonies are already underway. Matt Fry reports from New York. This part of New York, just a few blocks from Ground Zero, is full of American icons. In clear sight of perhaps the most famous, they gathered this morning to remember the unforgettable. Undeterred by any terror alerts and drawn by the power of collective grief, locals, tourists and relatives of the victims all felt the need to be here. I was at work when the first plane hit and, um, and Sophie was two years old and she was across the street at daycare and it was, it was terrible where I didn't know if I'd be able to go get her. <laughs> Same basic feeling as Pearl Harbor the day John Kennedy got shot. And it, it strikes everybody in the country. It's, it's a national day. It will be forever. Does this sort of event and indeed the fact that Osama bin Laden was killed this year provide America with closure? Not enough to forget. Nobody will ever forget. Lower Manhattan has become a fortress, the Hudson a moat. Police boats patrol the river. Streets and tunnels have become checkpoints. The president used his weekly address to talk about a threat which even his opponents admit he has handled well. As Americans, we refuse to live in fear. Yes, we face a determined foe, and make no mistake, they will keep trying to hit us again. But as we're showing again this weekend, we remain vigilant. We're doing everything in our power to protect our people. And no matter what comes our way, as a resilient nation, we will carry on. While the current president spoke in Washington, his two predecessors were in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the place where the fourth plane was brought down by the passengers. United 93, an icon of resistance in a country caught devastatingly off guard. How George Bush responded to 9-11 defined the last decade as much as the event itself. Tomorrow, politics will be suspended for a day and presidents past and present will all come here to a place that has gone from invincible powerhouse to mass grave to memorial in just over 10 years. Finally, the new World Trade Center is rising into the sky, one floor a week. The hole in the heart of Manhattan is being filled with cement, marble and glass. And a sight like this no longer makes most people wince. And let's go live now to Matt Fry, who's overlooking ground zero. Matt, well, what's the latest on the security threat there? Well, indeed, Christian, this uh, threat, this alert and the investigation that comes with it has really exercised official minds here, if not public ones. And what we know so far, and it is to coin a phrase specific but unconfirmed, is that this investigation seems to centre on three individuals, two of whom may well be American citizens who were thus able to slip into the country quite easily with their legitimate American passports. They may well be planning, have been planning some sort of car bomb attack, detonating a car or a truck somewhere in Manhattan. We don't really know. This would not be so surprising to the authorities because, of course, there was um, Faisal Shahzad, the Pakistani-American uh, uh, bomber who tried to detonate a car bomb in Times Square last year. That particular plot was thwarted. There are some suggestions there might be links between uh, Faisal Shahzad and these individuals, but we simply don't know. Another line of analysis, briefly, Krishnan, is that there seems to be some thinking that um, Ayman al-Zahwiri, the man who's become the number one in al-Qaeda after the killing of Osama bin Laden, has personally ordered some sort of attack in order to put his stamp and his authority on an organization, al-Qaeda, that is both fractious and, of course, diminished at the moment. Matt Fry in New York.